Hi there, everybody. This is Austin, the Best Second Afford Antiques channel. Um, I just wanted to make a video. Um, I've made videos about these types of art. Uh, they've all been longer videos talking about, you know, more examples. So feel free to go and find those. But um, what we're going to do today is just talk about general rules for finding relatively valuable antique Japanese ceramics. So I've got three of the more common types laid out in front of us today, okay? Um, we've got Kutani on the right, Satsuma in the middle, and Imari slash Arita on the uh, left side. So let's start with uh, Imari. And, uh, you know, this is a uh, somewhat more modern bowl, but I still thought the palette was really nice. I like the... Uh, I like the yellow enameling and the green enameling and then this uh, this sort of turquoise here. I like that quite a bit. Teal probably? Probably teal. Sea green. No. <laughs> Let's not get carried away, okay? Alright, so we see all the enamel de uh, detailing, uh, which, you know, that's a, that's a good step. I mean, that's, a, that's better than just seeing the hand-painted ones. Uh, if you don't see any raised decoration, uh, you know, it might not be real, it might be, um, I, you know, it might still be real, but it might be modern. Uh, could even be a different type of art. Chinese uh, ceramic is sometimes decorated like this as well, so, so you know, just be aware. This would kind of set your mind to uh, Famille Vert, maybe, this palette. Um, <clears throat> so, what I do want you to note, though, on this one, which tells us that it's a little more modern than some of the other pieces we're going to look at, is this dark dark blue because originally one of my cats is yelling at my door uh, really I mean yelling at me to let her in the antiques room she knows it's not gonna happen so I don't know why she's doing it but uh you'll note this uh, darker blue and if we look at the piece directly behind it we can see that um, though there is some darker blue it's more because they've stacked on um, you know layers of the lighter blue shade they had like you can see there's darker blue dots over here but that's kind of like they've done that three or four times with a drop of ink versus this which is just a very dark dye so I believe this will be older um, genuine antique uh, before 1930 uh, Meiji era Japanese and done with a genuine cobalt dye versus this which would be done with a uh, synthetic dye so that's not only how to uh, how to spot Amari but also how to spot older Amari so pay attention to that dye color and pay attention to whether or not there's actual um, whether or not there's actual enamel uh, detailing there so you see this one has at least an enamel border there's a bunch on the on the um, oh, outside decorations too. So this is Amari. Um, there's also Chinese, European, um, Dutch. Uh, Dutch is European, I know. Uh, but there are various types of Amari porcelain ceramics. <clears throat> this just happens to be Japanese. I haven't found many other examples. I do have some English Amari, which is kind of neat. Um, but yeah, you'll look for blue and sort of an iron red sometimes an orangish so you want kind of that lighter blue and it's really neat that we can look at both of them here together so you got the lighter blue in the background there oh my god my cat is just wolf howling at the door <laughs> sad as little pathetic so um so you see how much lighter that one is and obviously they can make it darker by layering it uh, I think it's called blotting it but uh, this obviously just comes out much darker <clears throat> Kevin I cannot believe you're yelling at me like that just, just give me 10 minutes I love you sorry we had to have a little talk about it Okay, so that's Amari, and those are usually on Arita pottery. So actually, Arita pottery um, will be this sort of white pottery, a very nice white pottery, and uh, it'll usually be decorated in blues, sometimes golds, but uh, but yeah, that's kind of what that'll look like. It'll look like without the uh, red and 
green and all that. Just maybe some blue and gold decorations on a nice white ceramic, and that'll be Arita, which these actually are, but they come from the port of Amari in Japan. And we've already talked about this, so I mean, just go find the other videos we'll be fine. It's so cold in my antiques room today. I feel like <laughs> I am I am just gonna <laughs> Okay, so um you guys may have seen uh, Antiques Roadshow just a couple of weeks ago. They did a they did a ladies' vases, um, Satsuma vases, and they were talking about uh, she had some Kinkazan pieces, which actually I have two Kinkazan pieces. That's one of them right there. We're going to talk about that. Um, she had some various uh, Satsuma pieces. Now, if you want to know how to identify Satsuma, a lot of the times, uh, most of the time, it's going to be decorated with some sort of gold gilding. And then um, likely going to have some sort of enamel, uh, which is called moriagi, or some type of uh, moriagi decoration, whether it's clay or enamel. Uh, I think I see most of the older pieces have enamel uh, moriagi. So, <clears throat> one of the things we can learn from this vase, I mean, obviously, just looking at it here, uh, this is well painted, and this isn't even top of the line. This is not a five thousand dollar vase, you know. This is uh, this is more than that. I mean, not more than that, but you know, it's it's worth a fair bit. It's just not uh, you know, thousands and thousands of dollars. But you can see that even not as the uh, pinnacle of this art, how much detail is in it, and I'll I'll let you see how big that is. That's uh, six inches, five inches. And I mean, look at how much detailing their clothing and stuff has. Uh, these are going to be the seven immortals and a dragon, I do believe. Eight? How many immortals are there? I forget. Look at the heavy gold gilding to uh, put whatever's in his hand there. Maybe a teapot or something. There's a scroll over in this guy's hand. I mean, those are big drops of gold. So. Satsuma wear is typically defined, well, I mean, um, typically noted as a uh, gold gilt uh, in varying stages. But uh, one thing that doesn't vary, if it's Satsuma, it'll have a cream colored crackle glaze. Do you see how tiny those little crackles are? But just the same, I, that's what it's going to look like all the time. Uh, so. Then we have, um, well, I mean, I want to say all the time, but I mean, really, we're just looking at rules to, uh, to you know, <laughs> to generalize. Um, this is a Shimazu clan crest, and it's a uh, cross in a circle, and uh, that's the uh, clan who ruled the region of Satsuma, which is kind of like a county state. So, yeah. Uh, that's one thing to look for. I mean, look for that amount of detail. If you see one of these and you're thinking, you know, maybe it's Satsuma, you really have to look and see, you know, is it done by a person who had literally all day to sit there and do this? Or is it done by a person in the modern era who's just pushing things out? So, I mean, you can learn a lot from details. So this is actually one of my favorite pieces. I got it for $20. It is a uh, Kinkazan marked piece. They actually spoke about Kinkazan on Antiques Roadshow. I have two of these pieces. Um, and again, we'll note that this is a Satsuma piece. And this is kind of breaking all the rules. You'll see ones that are a little bit funny, and that's why I use this as a specific example. I mean, this is a marked Kinkazan, one of the most famed creators of Satsuma wear in, in Japan. Uh, in Satsuma. So, so you'll note the crackle glaze and the cream colored glaze. Uh, this has probably been drilled out for a lamp at some point in time, which doesn't really hurt their value. I mean, Asian vases get drilled out all the time. Tons of them were lamps. What might hurt its value is that it's maybe missing a lid unless it just never came with one, but you can see where it used to have a lamp over the top of it here. And yeah, the hole in the bottom. So, so this was covered up by lamp hardware forever. Now look at this wild blue glaze. I mean, it is glass. It is it is enamel, and um, it's just a gorgeous piece. I just love this piece. But I wanted to show you this because it's not a very stereotypical thing. <clears throat> Definitely breaks the rules of kind of the uh, browns and golds of Satsuma. Yeah, just crazy enamel decoration. 
And it's so crazy that my camera just literally despises it. It cannot handle it. Okay, that's a little better. So yeah, that's just a beautiful piece. And, uh, you know, Kinkazan Satsuma, uh, you know, we're looking for uh, characteristics similar in all their pieces. So so the cream color crackle glaze and Asian writing, that's uh, pretty indicative. So then last up we've got Kutani, and I've shown you these pieces too, but um, Kutani, uh, gold and iron red were their colors. I mean, that is that is what they mostly did. I mean, it'll be somewhere on the piece typically. Uh, that's not to say older pieces didn't have a different palette somewhat. I mean, I've seen, you know, uh, kind of similar to that turquoise in the in the Amari piece right there kind of similar to that so you know take it with a grain of salt but but Kutani um, are famous for their outrageous decorations I mean if you look at if you look at how large this piece is and then we look at the um, scroll work I mean this is done with like a hair do you see how intensely <laughs> tiny that scroll work is so Kutani um, ceramics were just famous for their detail and their uh, and their beauty. I mean, really. So we'll just briefly look at this so you can kind of get a, you know, details. They're so important. I'm going to do a, a video on details pretty soon, because I mean, you know, again, we're looking at something the size of my the size of my thumb, and look at how many tiny stripes they've painted on this. Come on now. Come on now. I mean, there's no, there's no real reason for that. You know what I mean? Other than you're just gonna do it. <laughs> Nobody's gonna stop you. <laughs> so that's pretty cool. And uh, yeah, I like Kutani ceramics a lot. This is the other side of it. And look at all the intricate gold detailing just in the flowers and everything. So, so iron red and gold were pretty much Kutani colors. And then this is another. Uh, Kutani piece right here and you can see the golden orange I mean the, the golden red or orange whatever you want to call it and this one's a little different because it's a little more detailed as far as the um, birds and other art go and it wasn't as much of a monochrome sort of uh, palette so we've got some pinks and some real reds instead of the kind of orange there We've got some browns and grays for the bird and this uh, neat little shack cabin in the back and yeah we've just got pretty colors all over and beautiful little tiny gold gilding but you can still see the uh, the Kutani palette influence you know what I mean <clears throat> And then uh, under the lid, we've actually got another portion, and that has a little bit more of the iron oxide and gold. So yeah, these are just uh, things to generally look out for um, as far as Asian ceramics. I would think every piece here is worth at least, um, God, at least like sixty dollars. Um, uh, the slightly more modern bowl, you know, a little less expensive. This little basket guy here, I think, a little less expensive. But I think. Uh, I don't really know about the pieces in the background. I mean, you know, Antiques Roadshow saying that a Kinkazan piece that's much different than mine and uh, doesn't have a hole drilled in the bottom of it uh, is worth like, I forget what they said, 500 to, uh, uh, was it that one, 2,000? I, I forget, I forget. It doesn't really matter because I'm not going to sell these things because I, uh, I actually collect all this Japanese stuff because I love it. and. Uh, that's where we're at on that <laughs> so so I don't really check on values and stuff too much but I do know that I've done well with these collecting and uh, you know I haven't paid too much for any of them so so yeah just uh, be aware of them be aware of what's out there and and you know look for details that's that's a super important thing if you're looking at uh, really any sort of antique you know people spent time on details because uh, that was what they did they weren't getting paid to push out 50 of these in a day. They were getting paid to make magnificent things. And, you know. And, yeah, you can find them just by knowing what a magnificent thing looks like. So this is Austin at the Best I Can Afford Antiques channel. Hopefully this helps everybody. I absolutely adore you guys. Um, 
I hope you enjoyed this video. Feel free to like, share, comment, and subscribe.